hopefully we got this working right. Fingers crossed. Using new software, it looks like it's starting to come up. I've got all sorts of theme park news, Disney news, uh, Bush Gardens, Cedar Point, and other stuff. I've got some mail, I've got questions, and i got new software that I'm hoping is working right. So here we go. And I'm hoping that actually had sound with it, because... I can't even tell if that's working right. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. It looks like we've got everybody in the chat room. It does look like I'm actually streaming. So that is a good thing. About two hours ago, I actually loaded up my software I usually use to stream with. And it just locked up and froze and wouldn't unfreeze. And did that a few times and went, oh my goodness. So uh, happy that it's all working. I do have some mail that we'll be opening up a little bit later, so uh, that'll be a lot of fun. There is just a ton of stuff going on, though, in theme parks. Um, and so I actually, I wanted to, if you don't mind, actually talk about a whole bunch of the theme park news that's going on. You can see I've even got a whole list of stuff here. And hopefully um, we can pull everything up. Good to know that the lead had sound, so yay! That is awesome. Um, one of the first things I want to talk about, I've got like eight things here and I'm going to try and show you some pictures and other stuff too. Hey, in Texas, um, one of the things that you may not have realized is a few months back, Walt Disney World Resort got a brand new vice president. Uh, he was actually the guy who was in charge of Disneyland and he moved back over, uh, to Florida. It's, uh, Josh DeAmaro. And I'm actually really excited about this guy. Let me show you his, uh, instagram play page because if you want to know more about him you can actually check him out just by going right there and what's really cool with him is he is actually out in the parks visiting people and so you got pictures of him on space mountain with other cast members and hanging around and doing things and it's actually really cool to see him out in the parks i love this because when i was at disney we never saw the vice presidents. Um, now, we did see the guy who was in charge of Epcot. He would come out in the park and work with the CMs. We'd see the Animal Kingdom vice president. But the studios one, we I couldn't even tell you what his name was. And f while Phil's face was all over Magic Kingdom, the only time I saw him in the parks was with an entourage to say that he'd been there. But he was never really out in the parks and didn't hang around anybody. So it's really cool to see what Josh is doing. He's also starting these big initiatives. He's updating break rooms and cafeterias and putting in new technology for the cast. He's bringing in new meals and lowering prices for food, which is awesome. Uh, so I've, I've really been pleased to see what he's doing. He's actually talked about he's going to spend millions to update stuff that guests never see, but to take care of the cast members. So uh, really excited to see about all that. Um, yeah, whoop. Hang on, what kind of minivan do I have, Caravan? Uh, people are asking about my minivan. If you don't know, uh, a few weeks back, I got hit by a deer while driving down the road and knocked in my fender and my passenger door and did some other damage. It is a Dodge Crank Grand Caravan, and I love the Dodge vans. They drive wonderfully. We actually have the van back. It's fixed. The insurance officially totaled it and then gave us a check, uh, and we use that check to get much of the damage fixed. There's still some rumples in the hood. Um, we do have another dent in the one back door, uh, and then it's new parts. Well, new. There are parts that they took off of other vans to fix the rest of it. So we do have the van back. It's working again. It's in good shape, uh, which is a whole lot cheaper option because we got that done for about $1,600, and that $1,600 was not going to go very far in getting another car. So... Um, hey, can't just stay popping in. Well, good to see you popping in. So, um, what is it? Ooh, see if I can read this. Is that Eternal Whispers? That's really cool how you've got that. Of the wind. That's neat how it's uh, written there. So, um, so what are we talking about? I'm talking about all sorts of theme park news here. So, uh, but wanted to give you the update about the new uh, Walt Disney World Park Vice President. Love what he's doing. Uh, if you haven't looked up Josh DeMauro De again... Uh, look him up for the new cast members. You're in for a treat. He's a great guy. Uh, a couple things coming out of um, 
Disney, Walt Disney World as well, if you haven't heard, they had this new thing that actually just went up the other day. They've got the marquee for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway up now. This is a picture from Walt Disney World Magic, um, but excited. They're actually booking Fast Passes because it's opening up next month. Uh, not only that, but there's a lot of work going on at Magic Kingdom. Splash Mountain is getting a major overhaul, which it needed badly. <laughs> it was getting in pretty bad shape. And they're also doing a bunch of work at uh, City Hall and uh, Swiss Family... Sorry, yeah, Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse is getting a makeover. So they're starting to get the parks into shape for the 75th anniversary, which is coming up. Which is really cool, because... Unfortunately, Walt Disney World has had a lot of areas that started to decline. And so it's good to see some of these things uh, finally getting dealt with and uh, coming up, uh, working out. Uh, by the way, if you're watching, is my sound syncing with uh, my lips? I know that's a weird question, but I'm just wanting to make sure that my sound is actually working right as well. Because, again, I can't hear, so I can't see if it's working right. Uh, but if you could give me a, a, a flag up on that. Uh, yes, yeah, Splash Mountain is down for a few weeks. Uh, they're going to fix the animatronics, hopefully get it painted. There's a lot of little things in Splash Mountain that have not worked in a long time. So I am really excited to see that they're finally doing that. Uh, Gabrielle Books, I'm happy you like my live videos and they're helpful. That's cool. <laughs> um, whoever the two people are who dislike this stream, oh my goodness. There are some people... Okay, this is going to sound really weird, and I'll go off on a tangent real quick for this. There are a few people out there that they seem to live to dislike stuff. And I have between two to five people that I think the only reason they're subscribed to me is just simply so they can dislike. You know, it's okay. Because what they don't realize when they're disliking something is they're showing interaction, and that is all that YouTube actually actually measures is interaction with the videos. So if you remember uh, what's her name who did the song a few years back, Friday Friday, that had like six million dislikes, that girl made bucks off of that because of all those dislikes. So <laughs> it's okay, and it, hey, they got issues, they can get over it. Good sound is synchronized. I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Uh, let's see. Joseph, I'm underwhelmed about this news about the Runaway Railway. Um, actually, it is supposed to be a really cool ride. It's actually the very first ride featuring Mickey Mouse. Would you believe that? <laughs> he's had some shows, but he's had no rides. And actually, the previews that they have shown with the uh, trackless technology and some of the stuff going on with it, it looks like it is going to be an awesome ride. I hate that we lost the great movie ride, but I think this is going to be a really cool replacement. And they are putting it in at Disneyland as well in their Toontown. So um, expect once it opens up, I think a lot of people are kind of going, eh, are going to really be excited about this. It's looking like it's going to be an amazing, amazing ride. So um, let's see. Recall you making a video recalling annoying guests. I've made lots of videos about annoying guests. <laughs> uh, do I have a good Disney story uh, regarding an annoying annoying guests just all sorts of them so um honestly if you look on my channel and you do a search for annoying guest or dumb guest or silly guest or just guest you're going to pull up probably about 20 different videos that have all sorts of stuff like that um so it, it's easier to kind of point you to that i know it's kind of a cop-out answer and i'm sorry but there's so many different stories that to immediately pull out one is uh, tough. So that's probably the easiest answer I can give. And and uh, I am actually working on a couple other videos that will have some other stories in it. But I've a lot of those I've actually told already. So <laughs> Off the Cuff Gaming, you are very welcome. Love the channel. Do I miss Celebration City? I never got to experience Celebration City. It was closed when I was there. So uh, Craig, thank you so very, very much for the donation. I appreciate it. Uh, Craig's awesome. Love Craig. Uh, let me hit a couple of the other news here, and then I'll come back to the questions that you guys are popping up, because I want to make sure I get these, and then that way it may steer some of our discussion as well. Uh, I mentioned the refurbishment. Oh, they're finally, finally doing something with PhotoPass that we suggested way back in the year of a million dreams, so like 2006, 2007, so a dozen years later, and they are finally coming out with this wonderful thing called Capture Your Moment, 
where you can actually pay $50 and essentially rent a PhotoPass photographer for 20 minutes. Or if you want them for 40 minutes, you can pay 100 bucks. We actually suggested that way back as uh, one of the magic moments. Hey, you got your own PhotoPass photographer for, say, an hour to follow you around. Well, those who keep asking, well, how can I get a photographer for a proposal? Here you go. This is your easy way. What time do you want them? Where do you want to meet them? And they will book it. 50 bucks in your set and you've got your photographer. Doesn't include the pictures. You got to still pay for those separately with the memory maker. But um, that's a great way to do it. And I'm going, it's about time. They should have done this years ago. They've had variations with the studio and stuff, but this is cool. So I I was really excited to hear about that finally. Um, also, one other thing coming out of Disney, although it's more the Orlando court system. If you haven't heard, there was a animatronic figure that used to be at the Wonders of Life Pavilion named Buzzy. And Buzzy disappeared, and there's been all these rumors about what happened to him. Well, in the course of trying to figure out what happened to Buzzy... They also found out that uh, this person who was running a Twitter website uh, with a lot of backstage photos, turns out he had actually been uh, backstage and had stolen uh, Haunted Mansion dresses and wigs and props and uh, like $30,000 worth of stuff. Well, he got caught because he wasn't real smart and they actually, um, he reached a plea deal. I was... I was expecting him to get jail time, but he's getting, let me see if I can get all of this right. He's getting 10 years probation, 250 hours community service, a $25,000 restitution. Oh, and the guy that he was, that was helping him, he's his cousin. He's paying his $25,000 restitution too. So 50,000 bucks. And he's banned from Walt Disney World for life. So his name's Patrick Spikes. He used to run a Twitter feed called Backdoor Disney. And, uh, yeah, just got himself in a mess. I'm, I'm actually kind of pleased to see how this works out because he's going to be much more likely to pay the fines if he's outside working than if he's sitting in a cell. Um, no clue yet on, on what's going on with the actual Buzzy figure, if he's been stolen or if he's somewhere else or what happened. But good to hear that people like this get snagged and caught um, and that he's going to have a way to make it up because that, that's just not cool. Uh, you don't steal stuff from the parks, and especially not like this guy did and steal it, take pictures of himself wearing it, and then um, make lots of money. See, seriously, he sold these dresses and wigs for $30,000. My goodness. Um, A4, 22% is asking, did I hear about the fire that happened at Disneyland? Yes, there was a fire yesterday, the day before. Uh, that was right behind the fire station at Disneyland, uh, behind one of the buildings. And they did get it put out. Uh, it was a minor thing. Um, I believe there was a brief power outage. But they basically immediately got it put out and no problems at all. Um, so, no, not a big deal. Stuff happens, no idea what it was. Uh, but a very minor little thing. So if you were on Main Street, you might have noticed a little smoke. And that would have been about it. So, not too much. Um but since we're talking about Disneyland, there is a news blip that came out a little bit ago that there's going to be this new appearance in the Avengers headquarters that's opening up here pretty soon. This is cool. I definitely got to show you this. Uh, this is actually coming from the Disney site here. And watch this thing. This is actually flying through the air at Disneyland over the Avengers headquarters. Now, what you may not realize is that it's not a person. That is actually an animatronic robotic figure that is flying through the air. And it is amazing. Uh, I can't wait to see this thing live. Uh, just really, really cool that they've got that. Uh, and it is. It's a robotic figure they've been working on for a while that actually swings on a rope, swings up, gets up in the air and does all these somersaults and then lands in a net. It, it just an amazing deal. So it's going to be really cool walking around into the Avengers and you're going to see Spider-Man flying overhead and doing flips. Like, how cool is that? So, <laughs> um, what about that child taking the control knob from Mando's ship? You know, that kid, 
I, Mando just needs to slap that kid around. Okay, let's just be honest. You know, <laughs> uh, if you don't know what he's talking about, you need to go watch Mandalorian on Disney Plus, which is amazing. Uh, heard that Soaring Over California is coming back. Yes, of course, now that I'm not at Disneyland. They are bringing Soaring Over California back again for a few months. Don't know how long it will be there. Uh, I still, It's a much better version than Soaring Around the World. So happy to see that they are bringing it back. Uh, which is really cool. Um, Bush Gardens has a new coaster that is opening up this year. In fact, in just a few months, this is actually a video from Screamscape, and I'm going to give just a little blip. Hey, Mariah's down in Florida, so who knows? You may be seeing this. This is the station. They actually are using the old Guazi station. Track is done. Trains are on the track. Uh, this is a Rocky Mountain coaster project, and it is looking amazing. I, I can't wait to hopefully get a chance to ride this thing. I love that they kept the whole station. So you get to have the old feel of Guazi, but an entirely new track. And it's looking great. There's a little glimpse of it for you. Uh, it is going to be the tallest, fastest, steepest, and only flipping roll flipping. Going upside down wood coaster in Florida. Just an amazing looking ride. So it's going to be very, very cool. But wanted to give you that. Um, let's see. Little question. Uh, can't watch Disney Plus till it comes out in March. It's out already. Depends upon what part of the world you live in. Uh, Disney Plus is available here in the States. However, in UK and parts of Europe, it doesn't come out uh, for a little bit yet. So uh, I imagine, Joseph, I'm guessing you're probably in the UK. Is what? Yeah. See, there we go. <laughs> live in the UK. Uh, so it will be coming out uh, there soon. Uh, keep in mind that different places of the world get different programming, too, depending upon where you live. So uh, there was a whole big deal about Studio Ghibli, uh, that in certain parts of the world they're going to be on Netflix, but not, on, not in the United States and not in Canada and not in Japan. So it really kind of goes back and forth. So... Um, yeah, so the, just be aware that not everybody has Disney Plus yet. And in fact, there were actually, I'm trying to remember where it was. It might have been France. France, I think it was France. It actually had Disney Plus before the whole rest of the world. So <laughs> it it can definitely vary. Uh, one other big news item that I wanted to hit on real quick, and then I'll start attacking the mail and hitting some other questions, is Cedar Point. Okay, now clarification here because there are still some people out there that think this i don't hate cedar point i had a bad visit but i love the park and they actually have a really big year going on this is year number oop, get the right click there 150 for them and as very things that are coming out they've actually got and i'm going to scroll down here they're offering a contest to win lifetime passes to cedar point uh, they have a brand new ride coming called Snake River Expedition. Uh, I believe this is actually where uh, the dinosaurs used to be. But it looks like a fun family ride that looks like it'll be pretty cool. Uh, scheduled to open May 9th. They've got a big, huge nighttime parade coming with, let's see here, 15 floats. Let's see if I can get this right. A dozen floats and over 100 performers in it. So that will be really cool. Um, and then they've got all sorts of new food and beverage options and stuff. So if you have a chance to get up to Cedar Point, it's going to be awesome this year. So very, very cool that way. Uh, let me see here. Um, heading to a water park this summer for vacations. Water parks are fun. Um, I don't do them as often as I used to, simply because people don't want to see this in a water park. Uh, but I absolutely love them. Um my August 2018 trip was awesome. But yes, it was. Although I did end up getting stuck with this really weird guy for a while that didn't like coasters. I was kind of like, oh, dude. <laughs> um, and, and yes, I am referring directly about Craig there. So, um, want to visit Cedar Point for their 150th? I would love to visit to win one of those lifetime passes. That would just be really cool. Even though I only get up there every few years. Uh, but if you, they're offering 150 of them, and if you are one of the ones that wins one, then you actually are getting a four pack of passes, so you can give the other three to whoever, and uh, they're giving them away online, although there's no online contest yet, in the park, and uh, there was some other way too. 
so it, it looks like it's going to be really a neat way to do it. Um, let's see. To win both online, outside the park, and at Cedar Point. So probably some other contests in the local area. So a uh, new ride at SeaWorld coming in Regal Smokehouse at Epcot is opening tomorrow. Oh, I didn't realize the Smokehouse is opening tomorrow. That is very cool. Uh, all the SeaWorld parks have brand new rides coming in. So if you're at San Diego or San Antonio or Orlando, they've all got new stuff coming in, which looks like it's going to be really cool. I love the SeaWorld parks. So let me catch a little bit of the mail. Uh, let's see. You like rides to get you wet. Hey, you know, I, I hear that Silver Dollar City has some new ride that might get you a little wet as well. Uh, very much looking forward to Mystic River Falls. And that's opening up. They have not given an opening date yet. I would estimate probably end of April, first part of May, and part of that's going to be weather. So, uh, but very much looking forward to that. And I will be out at uh, Silver Dollar City um, opening week at some point. In fact, in the mail today came those. That is our annual passes. So that's what's going to get me out there. And that way I can go see the uh, progress that they're making on it. So can't wait. Looking forward to that. Uh, Schlitterbahn this summer. Yeah, uh, Cedar Point, um, Cedar Fair just bought it last year after um, they had some issues, bad issues, at the Kansas City Park that pretty much um, killed the company because they they were dumb. It, it was not good. Um, <laughs> let's see. So this is from Barry. I, I actually have mail dating back to January here. Uh, and in fact, the box is from mid-January, so I'll get to that last. But it's a happy birthday card. Uh, my birthday was mid-January. May today be filled with sunshine, smiles, and good times. And actually, it was pretty good weather on my birthday, if I remember right. So, thank you, Barry. Uh, let's see. Still miss SeaWorld of Ohio. I wish I'd gotten to see SeaWorld of Ohio. I've been to Orlando several times. In fact, last time I was there uh, in August, I actually did a whole video about it. Um, I've been to the one in San Diego. The last time I was at San Diego was when they opened up uh, Journey to Atlantis. Uh, so shortly before I moved out to Florida. So great time there. Let's see. This is also from Barry. Very nice little card there. It says, um, let's see here. Enjoy. Ooh, Gongzi Fat Choi. Okay, so Happy New Year in Chinese. Enjoy family food and red envelope money. Um Red envelopes, if you don't know, is the Chinese giving you generally a monetary, a monetary gift. What I thought was really funny is I saw that from Barry, and then the next day I got a red envelope from him. So, hmm. <laughs> uh, conductor shotgun is still wimpy. I'm hoping they fix that this year. I'm not optimistic about it. Um, if you go back to America, really want to go to Silver Dollar City, just remember, we're a huge country. Um my state is about the same size as the United Kingdom. So, uh, Getting ready to head to Jefferson City, Missouri. That's awesome, Robert. You won't be that far from me. Thank you for the happy late birthday wishes. Let's see. So this is what was in Barry's red envelope. Sending a whole lot of smiles your way. And love-filled prayers for a wonderful day. Happy Valentine's Day. And that's actually great timing since that is in uh, six days. Oh, and then I did get one other postcard here, which I thought was really cool. Greetings from sunny Castaway Cay, Bahamas. And this was actually mailed in September, and I got it about a week and a half ago, two weeks. So it took it a little while. Uh, greetings, Sir Willow. Thanks for making taking the time to make your videos. I just wanted to send you a note to let you know how much I enjoy your channel. Tyler Martin. And you can actually see it's actually postmarked from Castaway Cay. With Castaway Key, sorry, say it right, duh. Uh, but yeah, so thank you very much, Tyler. It did arrive. <laughs> Do I prefer rides in the dark like Space Mountain or rides in the light? Yes. <laughs> I like them all. I, I very much enjoy pretty much whatever ride I can get on. Uh, let's see, I've got two envelopes here from Michelle. Michelle S Sillies? I hope I said that right. Sillies? Have the sirens tested? Our sirens test every Saturday at noon. So, yep. And they're just loud. Okay, so let's see here. I've got two of these different envelopes from Michelle. And look, it's cardboard. I love cardboard. They're good for whacking my kids upside the head with. 
<laughs> Let's see. Note card first. Hello, I went on my annual vacation with my husband, of course. That's a good thing. <laughs> Here are a few flyers for some attractions around New Bronzefels, San Antonio, etc. Keep up the great work. All the best, Michelle. Let's see. We have the U Utsa Institute of Texan Cultures, which is very cool. The Legoland Discovery Center in San Antonio. That would be where my son would want to go. Louis Tussauds Wax Museum. Not Madam, is Louis. The Natural Bridge Caverns. And then the Guinness World Records Museum. Very cool. Thank you so much for those, Michelle. Let's see. If I want to know the extinct rides you've been on. Original Star Tours. I don't really call Star Tours extinct. Um, they do still have the original video available, even though they don't use it anymore. So um, it's there. It's just not there. <laughs> That's a great movie ride. Of course, well, I guess since you don't have Rex, it's not going to really work anymore. But uh, great movie ride. Yes, absolutely. Honey, I shrunk the audience at Disneyland Paris. Got to see that a number of times. That one is another one they could always uh, bring back again. Am I doing anything for Valentine's with my wife? Um, I'm picking up little pink pieces of paper that are coming out. Uh, at this point, I don't think we have I'm trying to remember. I don't think we have anything actually planned necessarily on that day. I've got a busy week ahead of me um, it, that may actually affect my production because my whole Tuesday is booked and my whole Wednesday is booked. And so I'm hoping to get videos produced tonight and tomorrow for this next week. This is getting cool. She's got all sorts of little <laughs> confetti here. This is also for Michelle. And of course, more cardboard with confetti. It's snowing pink stuff. <laughs> All right. George, a.k.a. Sir Willow. Let's see. Uh, has my son watched Lego Masters? Not yet. I don't think. I don't know. He might. Let's see. Um, did Honey and Shunk the Kids at Disney World? I did. Actually, I saw it both at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. So, Let's see. Just days after sending off a package to you with all... Uh, kinds of places to visit in Texas. I took a day trip with my husband, and, hubby and dad. Husby. <laughs> I've included a few more pamphlets here too. Hope you enjoy them. And Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to say this wrong, but Tomb Ball. Texan for fun. <laughs> that actually looks kind of neat. And I love the picture on the back. There is the train conductor. Very cool. That actually looks like a neat place. Here, let you kind of see the inside of the brochure. That, I have not heard of that. I I would be curious. The Texas Civil War Museum? Huntsville, Texas? <laughs> Hurry up and come on! I'm hearing banjos! Okay. Inside joke for us on the train. <laughs> but, uh, Pleasure Pier at uh, Galveston Island. There you go. With the coasters. One of these days, that's one I'd like to get to. Railroad Museum and then the Texas State Railroad. Very cool. Thank you so much, Michelle. Those are awesome. Let's see. Sims 4 is being overrun by Death Eaters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, oh, unless you missed something that preferred Dark Out was basically the first. What's your favorite this stream? It took almost 24 minutes. Yeah, it did actually take a little while before somebody asked what my favorite was. We'll just celebrate with more confetti. Okay. <laughs> uh, if I were a cast member, what then what should call me a Legoland worker? Model says, I'm trying to remember what Legoland calls their employees. I actually have a friend who works there, and I don't remember what their name for it was. Uh, Silver Dollar City, they're citizens. Um... Bush Gardens, they're just employees. I don't remember any special name for us at Bush Gardens. So, but uh, first show for Lego Masters was Wednesday. I will get to watch that at some point, I'm sure. Uh, let's see here. This is from Barry. This is Sending Love. And, and a wish for a day overloaded with fun. So we're going to have to come up with something for Valentine's Day because it is payday. So we'll actually have money. 
Uh, when you worked at Disney, could you ride any rides on your breaks or lunch breaks? This is basically true of every single theme park you were at. No. Uh, you are still officially on duty. You can go to a break room, but you cannot ride rides um, because you are on duty. You are not supposed to, in fact, do anything like that if you are in your costume or your uniform because you were representing the park and you're supposed to be an employee at that point. So if I was um, working at Disney and I wanted to go ride rides, I'd take in a change of clothes. And you still couldn't go on your break because you were on duty. And if you're on a ride and it breaks down and you get stuck, then you can't get back to where you're working and you're going to get fired. Uh, so you absolutely cannot ride while you are uh, on a break. It just too many other things that could happen. You get there and there's a long line and you can't skip lines. Employees don't get to do that. So no, no, no riding rides or seeing shows or anything at all like that on your break. Uh, your break is for you to rest, to eat, and that's it. So um, and then if after you were off work or before you were um, on duty, you had to be wearing something else if you wanted to go ride rides and stuff because you could not look like an employee. Uh, you were if you're dressed in a costume, then you are considered to be on the clock. That's a good good question though. So, um, let's see. Speaking of Honey, I Shrunk, one time at Disneyland, a few minutes before closing, CM said to make sure your seatbelts were fast and then pull on the yellow strap and about half the audience checked. Yeah, oh, yes. I have seen that a lot of times at different shows and stuff. Hey, everybody, make sure your seatbelt's nice and tight and you can watch half the audience go. They actually did that at the Frozen sing-along, which I thought was hysterical. <laughs> So when's my birthday? It was January 12th. So, uh, yeah, you missed it by almost a month there, Bonnie. So, um, did you, I mean, I'm not even going to be able to attempt to pronounce that one. You would have to change out of your costume. No possible way to do that and wait online and be back in your break on time. Um, Bush gardens. It was a no Disney. It was an absolute no silver dollar city. It was an absolute no, Although Silver Dollar City did allow us to wear our costumes when we got off work and ride certain rides. Um, and then I had a friend at uh, Six Flags that told me they were an absolute no. Just because, not even so much the costume, but if you risk getting stuck in a line or on a breakdown, you couldn't get back to your job, which meant you had abandoned it. So no, you were not allowed to ride on your brakes. The only slight exception may be if, say, you were working on a roller coaster then maybe they would let you ride on your break and fulfill, use that as their test ride they have to do occasionally. But generally, no, you were not allowed to ride anything on your break, um, costume or not. Uh, let's see here. Woo. And so I got a Christmas card here from uh, the Petersons in Billings, Montana. And came a little bit late, but I'll give you a look at that. I had to look first to make sure that this wasn't one of my church missionaries or something. It was kind of like, ah, no, but it's addressed. Cover up their address. It's addressed to Sir Willow. So so thank you so very much for the card. I appreciate that. Let's see here. Um, people asking if you were allowed to ride at the park. Uh, you're allowed to ride at the park, just not when you're working. <laughs> um, heard some parks won't let CMs or employees ride before their shifts, only after... I haven't necessarily heard that because I would ride at Bush Gardens and it actually I would ride at all three of uh, the parks I worked, all the Disney parks, Bush Gardens and uh, Silver Dollar City before I worked. If I had time, I would just go in in a different outfit, uh, put my work uniform backstage in a locker or something, go ride and make sure I had left myself plenty of time so I wasn't running to get to the clock. Uh, but I oftentimes I could get three, four rides in on uh, Tower of Terror within the first hour the park was open a lot of times. I love to do that. Go right Tower of Terror and then go clock in and start my shift at 11. I <laughs> did that a bunch. So, uh, never shout puddle on the Frozen ride. I did shout puddle at the Frozen sing-along show. <laughs> um, got some great looks from the narrators. It was great. If you haven't seen the Frozen sing-along show, if you enjoy Frozen, go see it. It's fun. It really is. Uh, let's see here. Could you run out to Disney Springs in uniform? No. Generally, the rule 
the basic rule at the parks, and like I said, Silver Dollar City bent this a little bit, but at Busch Gardens and especially at Disney, if you were in uniform, you were working. You were not supposed to do anything else in uniform. Now, some cast members uh, on their way home would go to the grocery store or something like that. But you were not supposed to be wandering around the parks or on Disney property in costume if you were not working. Because if you were in costume, the perception is you are working at that moment. And uh, you run into workman's comp issues and all sorts of other stuff. So if you were walking around Disney property in costume and you weren't going in and out of work, uh, but you were just wandering around, you could get fired. Um, if I went after I got off work and in my uniform, I was walking around Disney Springs in my costume. I could have had a manager grab me and write me up or fire me for it. So absolutely not. Nope. I know some of the parks are more lenient. Uh, Six Flags and Cedar Fair tends to be more lenient about that. But Disney, at least when I was there, was very strict on you are not supposed to wear your costume on property unless you're working or coming in or going out from work. So that was what what they did um let's see here um let's see y'all puddle yeah y'all puddle the frozen sing-along yes i did i did and i had the narrators go it's there's usually somebody that will do it it's fun <laughs> daughter's been allowed to ride space mountain in her costume on a few occasions at the end of the night oh okay i should clarify this uh from suzanne uh, there are times uh, where the parks will do an employee event, an employee ride kind of thing. So closing time, if you get off right around closing, um, or they may announce this, they may allow employees to ride in that case to either close out the night or after the park is closed, because at that point, you're really not dealing with the guests. That is the, the one exception, and they will usually let you know if that's okay. Um, and there are times when you can ride, uh, as an example, when we were doing radiator Springs racers at Disneyland, uh, our last ride on it, they actually sent us up to the disabled access cause they had somebody waiting to fill a car and our size group was right to fill it. Well, whoever it was that was filling it in, we still ended up with an empty seat. And so they actually had one of the cast members ride with us. I think partially to supervise the one that had the disabled access, but that also gave them the ride through because every couple hours or so you do need to have a cast member do a ride through just to kind of look over the ride and make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. So they did that with us. So you will occasionally see employees and cast members riding in uniform that way and occasionally for a special event at the end of the night. It's a rare thing, <laughs> though. So uh, let's see here. Looked like the VP on Space Mountain had two CMs in costume with him. Uh, yes, and that would have been just like Suzanne had mentioned at the end of the night after it was closed. So it it is an unusual thing. It does rarely happen, but it, it does. And you're not going to tell the vice president of the company, uh, sorry, sir, you can't ride. Yeah, you'll bend a couple things like that. <laughs> so, uh, What do I think about the Disney Wishables? I'm not even exactly sure what that is, Ross. I'm sorry. I'll have to look it up. Okay, by the way, this is a box from Barry. Uh, this actually was mailed, let's see, January 6th. So I'm kind of thinking this is more birthday-ish because it arrived right around that time. And it has been sitting here ever since. So I'm sorry, Barry. It's a little on the heavy side. So he's got a bunch of stuff packed in here. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see... Let's see. No, some businesses let employees bring their uniforms home. Now, Disney will let you bring your costume home. Uh, in fact, they don't mind you taking it home and washing it yourself and taking care of it yourself. But you are not supposed to be going around. Um, in fact, if you are in a costume, you're not even allowed to eat in the parks at Disney. Uh, and actually, Bush Gardens, we were not supposed to eat in the park either in costume. Uh, or even order food. We had backstage employee cafeterias and we had break rooms. And that's where we ate. 
No eating and no drinking in front of guests and no ordering food in front of guests. Silver Dollar City, we could actually go uh, to the restaurants and park and order food, and I would on a regular basis. I'd run up from the train, I'd run up to Wagon Works and get myself a burger and fries because it was awesome. And then um, I would run back to the train, usually eating fries on the way. Uh, but Disney was Disney's very strict on those kinds of things, partially because they want to preserve the magic. You are a character playing a role, and you generally don't want to think of people, you know, use coming out of those roles and being normal people. Uh, it's just like Disney does not allow cast members to use the uh, guest restrooms while they're working. They are supposed to use the backstage employee restrooms. So not, not even in costume using a, a restroom where guests could see you. Now, Silver Dollar City barely has any bathrooms backstage where employees can use them, so you have to use the guest restrooms. But um, generally speaking, you were not supposed to be seen as a normal person if you were in costume. That's a good way to put it, I think. So, uh, but they did start making the rules more lenient several years back. And so I would go grocery shopping in my costume on the way home or on the way to work. I would stop at the store and pick up food. But even for years, they didn't even want you doing that. So, um, let's see here. And let's see. End of the night. It was in line for Dumbo once with Pluto at Disneyland. Was asked to let him pass me. Uh, think Mickey or Minnie. Yes. I could see. Uh, I have seen end of nights and end of shifts where they will bring all sorts of characters together and everything, which is really cool. So, wishables are little stuffed animals that come in a blind bag. Okay, very cool. So another collectible. Uh, I got no money for collectibles. Uh, I'm goodness, I'm bad enough with the pins. Surprise! Disney doesn't have more costume themed water bottle holders. Oh, the black sleeves. The idea of the black sleeves. Um, if you ever watch Disney cast members, their water bottles. Have a little clip on your belt, and it has um, an insulated sleeve that your bottle sits in. And the idea with the black is it's to make it disappear so you don't notice it. It looks like it's a belt or something, so you don't really see the water bottle. And at Walt Disney World, that is the one exception to eating or drinking, is you can drink water from your water bottle on stage. Um, and that's so that way you don't have it, cast members passing out from heat exhaustion. Uh, but they do allow that. So, but other than that, you're not supposed to. And even your water is supposed to be water. You could get away with lemonade sometimes, but you weren't supposed to have anything that was a different color. So it looked like you might have been drinking something else. So I ought to pull this stuff out here because there's Barry's got several things in here, and this looks very interesting. And you all got me on tangents. So let's see. Ooh, let's see. Popular assortment of Florida citrus candy. Yum, yum. So that is going to help me not lose weight. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Definitive Star Trek trivia. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, this will be really, really cool. If you don't know, I am a big Trek fan. No, I have not seen the new Picard yet. No spoilers. Uh, we are definitely planning on it. Uh, but yes, love Trek. Uh, haven't been real keen on new Trek. But if you give me old Trek, I absolutely love it. Oh my goodness. This is amazing from dreamer to dream finder okay if you are familiar with the journey into imagination it was originally journey to imagination and this gentleman here is the guy who did the voice of dream finder on the right and then portrayed him in the parks oh this will be cool thank you so much barry that i'm looking forward to that and then there's still a couple other things in here I'll see, and there is a card here and a couple rolls. Okay, box is empty. So let's open the, the card. Ooh. Yeah, shouldn't be no see em green, except no see em green doesn't work on costumes. It's actually a see em there where black blends in on costumes. Wishing you a happy birthday. It's time for fun. Your birthday's here. Hope your smile goes ear to ear. Enjoy the gifts. Well, I said, I'm loving what I've seen already, Barry. You're spoiling me. And then I oftentimes keep people asking, where did you get that shirt? Barry is usually the source for it. Although um, what was really cool is if you saw the video where I was wearing the Figment and Dreamfinder shirt, in fact, uh, and I had posted it up on, uh, actually had somebody who you who looks, 
okay, brain, function. Um, had somebody who linked me on Twitter that saw the video and was really excited because they're the ones who designed the shirt. So if you want to know where to get the Dreamfinder Figment shirt in front of the Epcot ball that I wore, go look at my Twitter feed. Um, it's at GBurnash. And there's a link uh, to one of my posts there that will link you to the store where you can get that, which I thought was cool because half the time, I don't know where Barry gets these shirts. He gets me the most awesome shirts. So if you love all these different shirts I wear, yeah, you got to thank Barry. And there's been others that have sent me some as well, too. Uh, Craig's actually sent a couple and stuff, but let's see. Let's see if we can get this. <laughs> we were talking about Sam the Eagle earlier. A salute to all nations, but mostly America. That's awesome. I'll, I'll definitely be wearing that one. <laughs> I love Sam Eagle. He's awesome. And let's see. And then we got a maroon. Oh, and actually, I got to watch the new Doctor Who, but I hear that this guy may be playing a role. Yes, he's a Cyberman. Delete. Awesome. Thank you so much, Barry. Oh my goodness, that is really cool. Got some awesome brochures, and then and then yeah, that that is just an awesome, awesome gift pack. I need another week of vacation so I can read the books. <laughs> uh, let's see. I actually do have water fountains while I'm working at Legoland, so it would be okay to drink. Uh, but if it's a drink that would be uh, bought from the park, then yes, that'd be a no no. Yes, that is true. Um, if you really need water, generally. The rules at the parks is if you need a drink of water, go get a drink of water because we would rather you went and had a cup of water or got a drink at a drinking fountain than pass out or heat stroke or heat exhaustion or anything like that. Get your water, which is why you get to drink, uh, which is why you get to carry around a water bottle if you are outside. Um, because And it's a safety thing as much as anything. No, if you saw my four keys to the Disney kingdom, what's the number one key? safety and so water is a safety thing and so yes it falls into that and that will override the um uh the story with it so that that's why that's up there hi glee club good good to see that you made it uh trying to create a list of disney rides that are a bit more sensory friendly so far i have people mover and kilimanjaro safaris um in what okay um in which ways are you talking about sensory friendly, Nicole? Are you talking about uh, sight? Are you talking about sound? Uh, specific kinds of disabilities? What you may actually want to do is check with Disney because G Disney has actually gone through and actually evaluated most of their rides, if not all of them, as to how they will work with certain uh, disabilities, certain uh, sensory perceptions, so autistic and things. So they will have good descriptions of them. So you may want to check with Disney um, already because they might have already actually done that for you. Um, and I couldn't tell you exactly where on the website, but I am sure it's there. Start off with the disabilities information and there will be disability information for each ride and they can probably... Uh, give you some good information like that. What's my shirt size? I like to think I'm a large, but um, because of the extra weight, it's probably an extra large right now. I can still squeeze into a large, um, but generally extra large at this point. Road Journey into Imagination last month, and the soundtrack shut off in the part with the seeing eye. Ah, oh, with the seeing eye chart. That's still, I still love that ride. I wish I had gotten to see the original uh, people were saying, you didn't mention that on your extinct rides. It's because I never got to ride the original one. I didn't get to see uh, anything at Disney World until 2006, which was well after it had been uh, changed. So, uh, Silver Dollar City, you can be on the phone while working. You you can't be on the phone. Okay, I'm ha happy that got fixed. Um, again, this is supposed to be true at all theme parks. Um Disney used to be much stricter. It used to be if you were even seen with your phone, not even on it, if they just saw your phone on you, you could get ridden up or fired. Um, and then they gradually allowed people to start carrying them around. Uh, with PhotoPass, we oftentimes were allowed to carry them simply because our base where we started off could be at one side of the park and then we would end up way over on the other side all day. 
So we were allowed to carry them sometimes, but we were not supposed to have them anywhere a guest could possibly see it. So you may carry it on the other side of the park and then lock it up in a locker or something. But you were not ever, ever supposed to have your phone out where a guest could see it. And that's true at Silver Dollar City. It was true at Bush Gardens. That if your phone was seen, you were at the very least getting a reprimand. And if it was at a time when you were supposed to be doing a safety critical, or if you were supposed to be dealing with guests, you were probably going to get fired. And I've noticed a lot of the root parks are not as strict on that. Um, Disneyland Paris, I actually took pictures of cast members walking through the park on their cell phone. I, I was shocked because here goes this pirate walking from Pirates of the Caribbean to the backstage on his phone the whole time. And I was like, dude, blew my mind. Um, but I have actually seen a couple cell phones in CM hands at Disney the last couple trips. And I've seen it at Bush. Um, I've seen it at Silver Dollar City, so they're not as strict as they used to be. Uh, be aware if they decide to start cracking down. It looks tacky. It looks horrible. Just, yeah. Um, can you put clear Pedialyte in your water bottle? Um, they're not going to test it, but I don't know why you'd want to drink Pedialyte. Ugh. If you're going to do that, put in Gatorade. It tastes better. <laughs> so, um see sir willow portray a sausage in a large shirt thanks craig <laughs> favorite mary poppins song hey craig there's number two <laughs> uh favorite mary poppins song you i don't know um i have no idea i like the whole soundtrack so it's like i say with favorites i can't pick favorites i'm terrible on that um Oh, okay. Uh, autism. Yes, Nicole. Definitely. There are a few things to look up. Uh, Disney does have a page dedicated to autism. Uh, they do have some things spe specially set up in that regard. But if you actually do a Google search for autism at Disney, you can actually pull up all sorts of information, um, not just from Disney, but other people who go and they will give you some great advice, what to be aware of and what to know. And so there's a lot of information out there already. So just Google autism at Disney, you know, or autism at Disney World or autism at Disneyland. And that will give you probably what you were looking for and the information that you're needing. Uh, plus, probably more than you were looking for. And that will be very helpful as well. Uh, my my niece, uh, goodness, I was just thinking, my niece just went to Disneyland last year, and uh, for her, it was just a matter of having the headphones to help uh, drown out some of the extra noise, and she was generally fine on most of it, but I couldn't tell you what rides she avoided because of some of it. So, But yeah, just do the Google search. That'll give you all sorts of fun. Um, let's see. I may have had my phone on me when I was working, but in my defense, I didn't have a watch and it was only used to tell the time. I, I actually watched a cast member at uh, Disney World get fired because they did this. And that's all they did. They they checked the time, but it was out. Um, and I think they had gotten in trouble with it before. Get a watch. Five or ten dollars for a watch. <laughs> Joseph. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to risk getting fired because you had to check the time. That That's not going to be worth it. So uh, we I would actually, with my costume, I had enough pockets that I had a, a pocket that I could bury my phone in and I would turn it off. I wouldn't even leave it on silent just in case I would turn it off completely and then put it down in my pocket and check it out at break. Just save for that way. Uh, let's see. What is your go-to movie to watch right now? Whichever one is on TV. <laughs> Flash full of liquor helps Clueless get down. Um, it also helps you get escorted out of the park in a big old hurry and not allowed back in and can cost you your paycheck. Don't do it. Sounds funny, isn't funny in reality. <laughs> so, um, If you have an extraordinary situation, such as a sick kid, relative in the hospital... Can you get a waiver of the no phones policy as long as the phone is on vibrate and you don't whip it out? Um, you may get a phone number to have them call while you're on duty. And this will vary from park to park. 
but generally no, because a lot of times you're not even in a place where you can answer a phone. If you are running a ride and you do this while you're running a ride, you have now put everybody on that ride. You've put their safety in jeopardy. So no, um, when I was running the train, I couldn't stop a robbery to answer a phone. So no, uh, you could check them at breaks, but generally if you have an emergency like that, they might give you a call in number where they can reach a supervisor, but it was still no phones because you can't stop what you're doing to pull a phone out. Not, not at a park. Uh, it's almost like my wife teaching. I've got a lady who likes to call my wife while she's teaching. She's busy. She has another thing. If it's an emergency, you call the office, not the teacher. And then the office can relay the message. So generally, no. Um, there, there's ways around it. And there are some spots they might allow you. But you're not going to put safety at risk for that. So um, now I mean, we would have people, though, that they wouldn't tell their employees or their employer that they had the phone on like I kept mine in my pocket turned off and then at break I would turn it on and check it uh, so if you're worried about that yes there are ways you can carry it you leave it off check it on your brakes uh, and then turn it off again and bury it once more but don't leave it if it buzzes while you're working everybody knows you got it not a good not a good idea so um, let's see be shame with figment character got completely stripped not going to happen at this point uh, Disney has realized that they have a cash cow in Figment, which is why the art festival Figment is now the main character for it and other stuff. Figment's not going anywhere. They may update the ride again, but they will keep Figment around. Excuse me. Need some tea. Ah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> which tour at the Disney parks would you recommend? Uh, depends upon the park you're at first. This is actually a good question because uh, there are some great tours. If you are at Disneyland, there's a tour called Walking in Walt's Footsteps. That is amazing. Um, I have not been on it. I have to give you that disclaimer. But um, it will take you up into Walt's apartment. It will walk you through the parks, show you everything that uh, Walt did. Far and away at Disneyland, that is the tour I would take is Walking in Walt's Footsteps. At Walt Disney World, there's two I absolutely love. Uh, one is the one I just took this last year, the Keys to the Kingdom tour, which will take you into the Utilidors. It treats you like you are a cast member and talks about stuff that you don't get unless you're a cast member. Very, very cool tour. If you are a train person, then also, um, and I can't remember the name, but the one that takes you backstage to the train roundhouse in the morning and the preparation, it's an awesome tour. Very, very cool. So if you're looking at tours, those are the three. Walking in Walt's footsteps at Disneyland and then keys to the kingdom or the train at Walt Disney world. So, um, absolutely worth the money. All of them. Those are, those are very good tours. Um, let's see here. Um, spoons full of sugar helps the sleepy go away. Funniest thing I've ever seen at Disneyland. Well, I've only been to Disneyland a few times. So, <laughs> uh, if you want to know, go watch my videos from last October. Um, I hate to point that, but, uh, that's the easiest way for Disneyland. Uh, it, and again, that's one of those favorites. I've got so many things. It, it, it's hard to, I can't pick out one. That's like giving, that's like me having a list of a thousand things and saying, pick one. Yeah, I can't not going to happen. Um, let's see. If you go to the Diz channel on YouTube, they have a number of ride through videos and attractions. Oh, okay. Tammy's giving some more advice too, for the autistic, um, as well. Um, so thank you, Tammy, for stepping in with that. That's awesome. Said your daughter is going to Japan. Told you mine's going to South Korea. Are you concerned about the Wuhan virus? Um, at this point, no. Uh, and that's partially because thinking back, uh, to SARS, uh, it lasted a few months. I'm optimistic that they will have it under control by then, especially with the Olympics coming up. Cause that's in a few months. Uh, I, I think they will probably have it reined in well before that. Uh, my daughter's looking at going early plan. She doesn't have official date, but she's hoping to get there uh, a week or two before the Olympics to start her work. We'll see if that works out or not, but that is the early plans. Uh, we do actually have a friend who worked in China 
And she was actually in Thailand when the virus broke out and she had to come back to the States and is doing her work remotely until uh, she can get back to China. She's having to wait for it to settle down. So it, it's a mess right now. Hong Kong Disneyland is closed for at least a couple months. Uh, Shanghai Disneyland is closed be because of it. So, yeah, not a good situation. Um, let's see here. Uh, what do I think Disney World is going to do for the 50th anniversary? Hopefully get everything fixed up. <laughs> I don't think they have anything planned as far as special. There's talk about redoing the castle, which if they do the castle like they did for the 50th anniversary of Disneyland, that was amazing. Uh, no birthday cakes. But I haven't heard anything about any other special plans. So... Um, magic behind our steam trains. Thank you, Craig, for the name of that tour. Are smartwatches allowed to wear while on shift? It depends upon where you work and what you do with them. If you use it only as a watch, maybe. If you are trying to do messaging and answer calls and stuff, no. Uh, generally, they are discouraged. They will allow you to wear a wristwatch, but they don't really want smartwatches. Um, and in fact, I know some parks don't even want you wearing Fitbits. So... Any new video games I'm playing? <laughs> You're going to hate this. Um, I have played Minecraft a couple other times, but the video game I am actually playing the most right now is a 12-year-old MMO called Lord of the Rings Online. And I actually played that when it very first released. I hadn't played in five years, and it's kind of sucked me back in a little bit. So um, when I do play it, um, I will stream it on Twitch occasionally. So if you want to watch me run around in uh, Lotro, um, look for the Twitch thing. But I only do that once or twice a week, and that's just when I'm relaxing. So it, Twitch is not a big thing for me. I don't ever expect it to actually do anything. I just figure, well, yeah, hey, I'm playing anyways. I might as well. So, um, let's see. Uh, Craig's talking about uh, the walking waltz footsteps. So, yes, Craig's done a number of the tours. Craig is a good source on those, too. Uh, Dad got knocked over by a runaway scooter at Disney World. Welcome to Disney. Do you want to know how many times my ankles got smashed into by scooters and people got run over? Yeah, scary stuff. <laughs> um, it, in fact, uh, that's actually one of the reasons why during Christmas week the PhotoPass photographers are usually not out in the parks because it's a safety hazard. Um, we would get more of us injured during that time from scooters and strollers and stuff. It, it's scary. Um, let's see. Am I a future regeneration to you? Uh, nope. Although I was actually kind of joking that I should have somebody at my funeral. Let's see. Where is it here? Um, and I'm going to lose my, my Sonic. Ah, I know it's here. I can't see it. Well, bummer. I have a Sonic screwdriver here somewhere, um, on that shelf. Uh, but I was joking that at my funeral, I need to have somebody come running in wearing the same outfit that my body is dressed in with a Sonic and going, now this is where it gets complicated. My family didn't think that was very funny. They were like, really? That That's just not cool. That's yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no, no sense of humor at all. Um, I have Twitch. Yes, I do actually have a Twitch. I haven't done very much on it. I think I've had like five streams, but I do actually have a Twitch and I've started doing it a little more regular. So um, Lord of the Rings is for mermaids. So somebody who's probably never played it. So <laughs> um, let's see. Once I'm going to play Weird Al's, I'll be mellow when I'm dead at my funeral. I OK, I know this is kind of weird, but at that point. OK, one, I'm not going to be around. I don't really care. But I really hope that people have fun and they laugh and they do something entertaining. Um, and I don't care if they mock me and make fun of me. I, I hate sad funerals. Let mine be fun. Uh, do something entertaining and amusing. So, uh, But whew, it's been an hour. So we got the mail covered. Thank you again to uh, those who wrote. Uh, to Let's see. I want to get my name right here. Um, to Michelle, here we go, I was going Melissa, it's not Melissa. Thank you to Michelle for the brochures and Barry for the cards and the presents and the shirts and uh, candy. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Hope you had a lot of fun. Hope you got to see some of the stuff 
coming out at the parks, which is really cool. What's the Twitch name? Sir Willow, of course. Right there. <laughs> so, same name I use everywhere else. If you ever do a Google search for Sir Willow, it's almost all me. There is an occasional rare person who's tried to snag the name for something else, but... Uh, 90% of the references you see on the internet that say Sir Willow are me. So Twitch, Sir Willow. Facebook, Sir Willow. Uh, Twitter, Sir Willow. <laughs> so, uh, But thank you so much for joining me, guys. I'd love to hear um, everything you got to do. There's not going to be a Disney villain theme park. I'm sorry, Video Bird. They've been talking fifth park for decades. Ain't happening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, nice idea. In any case, thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. And hey, don't forget to check out the links in the description. There's a ton of info there. So if you're asking questions, it might be down there. Or send me notes on the Facebook page and other stuff as well. Thank you so much, Brett, from New Zealand. Oh, hey, that's really cool. I appreciate it. So have an awesome day. And I'll post a quick link into the, um, into the stream here with the Twitter link. Or for the Twitter link. Not the Twitter link. Uh, for the Twitch stream in just a second. Thanks so much. Bye.